How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show, we're going to take a look back at the Premier League games over the weekend. There were wins for Arsenal, wins for Manchester United and another defeat for Chelsea. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So like I said, we're going to take a look back at the Premier League action over the course of the weekend. Plenty of goals. It was one of those weekends that leaves you scratching your head at some of the results. It was one of those weekends, if you was doing an accumulator, it probably was difficult to have won anything because, uh, yeah, there were some random, random results in there. Um, first of all, Everton against Spurs. 2-2 draw, last minute equaliser for Everton. Um, I see the Spurs manager moaning about you know, VAR and whatnot, and <laughs> changed his tune now, hasn't he? <laughs> um, but listen, that's a good point for Everton, given the circumstances of where they are. And it's not a good point for Tottenham, um, given the circumstances of where they are. Um, but yeah, it's um, a fair result, I would say. Um, Brighton against Crystal Palace, their derby. Um, still a very strange derby to me. Um, but listen, Brighton, they got back to winning ways after the humiliation of losing to Luton. 4-1. Um, and what I'll say with Crystal Palace is how long will Roy Hodgson still be in a job? Surely they've got to make changes because that's another abysmal performance. Feeble, weak and just gave up. And the game was already over in the first half. And... Um, you know, like I said, I might not understand the derby, but their fans do. And it means a lot. You know, this game will mean a lot to their fans in the same way it means a lot to Arsenal fans when we play Spurs. So even though I don't get it, they get it. So it means everything. And to lose in the manner that they did, they're not going to be happy at all. Um, so you've got to ask that question. How long um, can Crystal Palace, you know, keep going the way that they are because they could end up falling into big trouble. Um, Newcastle against Luton got to be the game of the weekend for entertainment. 4-4. What a game this was. What a result for Luton. Um, bit of a catch-22 because if you would have said before, you'll go to St. James's Park and you'll pick up a point, they would have took that. But if you say to them, at one point you're 4-2 ahead, then you're got to have a bit of disappointment that you weren't able to see that one out um, but it was an absolute roller coaster of a game um, standout player for Luton is Ross Barkley he looks immense he's really really found his feet again um, since he's gone to Luton and um, he looks quality he's always been a good player um, but obviously he's had his problems and when he moved to Chelsea it didn't work out and he looks like he's found himself a home again and um, his performances, you know, are showing just how much he's enjoying his football. Um, big, big result for Luton. It's a point, you know, on the road, which they will use towards where they want to go. And for Newcastle, yeah, it's not a great point for them, to be honest with you. Um, Burnley against Fulham, 2-2 draw. Another game that was quite interesting. Loads of drama and bits and pieces, but... Yeah, you've got to, uh, you know, look at this one in, in terms of um, how Burnley will feel being 2-0 down, um, you know, inside the opening 20 minutes or so. And at that point, you're thinking, wow, this is going to be a really, really long day for them. Um, but then the new signing, Fafana, um, ends up scoring a couple of goals. And that's exactly what you need from a new signing. That's exactly what you need. Um, you know, when you go into a new league and you're, you know, you're trying to impress a new club and whatever. And yeah, that's a, a big couple of goals. Big, 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 big couple of goals. And again, what Burnley are trying to, you know, fight for is um, it's a point. And um, yeah, I don't know whether overall it would be, a, you know, enough, but it's a point. Um, Sheffield United against Aston Villa. I said this already and I'll say it again. Sheffield United are done. They are going to be relegated. You know, they changed the manager. And if anything, they're as bad, if not worse. Um, losing 5-0 at home to Aston Villa. 
Aston Villa were 4-0 up by half time. And I'll tell you something. If you haven't seen the goals from this game, go and watch them. Because it was a compilation of just absolute bangers. Um, some of the goals that they scored were absolutely insane. Um, Tielemans, his goal, the way it hits the crossbar. And that's some goal. And it's just... Like loads of them. Everything that Aston Villa seemed to hit went in. But Sheffield United, they are absolutely pathetic. Um, and they're done. They're done. They ain't getting out of the mess that they're in. They're relegated. And I'll say that already. Um, Manchester United against West Ham in, you know, big result. Looks on paper a very comfortable one. I um, was watching this game before the Arsenal-Liverpool one. And what I'll say is, is that... Manchester United deserved the win. They were very clinical and took their chances. But West Ham will kind of kick themselves a bit because, you know, they went behind. And then for the rest of the first half, they played really well. And they had a lot of shots and a lot of chances. And even in the second half, when it was 1-0, Harry Maguire, you know, messes about on the ball. And West Ham are in. And oh, what a miss. And to compound that and show how big that miss was, was 60 seconds later, Man United go up the other end and Ganacho scores and it's game over. And that's the fine margins, you know, in matches that one chance at one end, don't take it, get punished at the other. But like I said, Man United deserved the points and they were very clinical. But West Ham, they were definitely in the game. They were definitely causing problems. And if they take one of those chances, it could have been a different game. But... It wasn't. Simple as that. Uh, Bournemouth against Nottingham Forest, 1-1. Um, I suppose Bournemouth will take the point, given the fact they played the last 10 minutes with 10 men. Um, Nottingham Forest picking up a point on the road. I don't know if that'll be enough for them, um, given you know their circumstances. Um, but yeah, it's a point apiece. Um, Chelsea against Wolves. Again, another humiliating performance for Chelsea. Losing at home um, 4-2 to Wolves. Cunha um, scoring himself a hat-trick in this game. Um, Chelsea, they're just an absolute shambles. What they've spent, what they're producing. And you've got to ask this question. How long will Maurizio Pochettino be in a job? Could Chelsea be looking at it and saying, you know what, let's get the Carabao Cup final out of the way. And then if this continues, we're just going to change the manager. They're not going to get relegated. They're not going to finish in the top six in any European places or anything like that. Um, so kind of mid-table, get rid of the manager, rebuild for next season. I want to say rebuild. It's funny, isn't it? When they spent a billion odd pound or whatever it is, it's just ridiculous. They are crap. Absolute rubbish. And there's so many bang average players in there. And I've got to ask the question. I said it yesterday. Is... Why did they spend all that money on Enzo when they already had Jorginho? I'm not going to moan about it. Cheers for that. But it's just staggering. And um, there's talk of FFP and all kinds of madness going on at Chelsea. And I knew it weren't sustainable. And I knew, you know, these kind of things were going to happen. But <laughs> I'm not really bothered. Get back to where you used to be. Um, and it's as simple as that. Big, big result for Wolves. Um, Arsenal against Liverpool, big, big win for Arsenal, uh, moves them up into second place, two points behind um, Liverpool, huge result and I've gone into great detail about that and the reason in the performance etc, massive, massive win and um, of course tonight it is Brentford against Manchester City, Brentford actually done a double over Man City last season so a favour there wouldn't go amiss please um, but we will wait and see what happens. Um, just quickly, in terms of the Premier League table, what does that do? Of course, like I said, Arsenal move up to second. Um, Man City will go ahead of them again on goal difference if they win tonight. Um, Aston Villa in fourth place um, on 46 points. So they're still in and amongst it. Um, still there. Um, and they're having a great season. Spurs, 44 points. That's Like I said, two points dropped. Big, big two points dropped. Um, Manchester United go into the top six now um, on 38 points. West Ham and Brighton, seven and eight. Newcastle all the way down to ninth. Um, Wolves, with that victory, they go above Chelsea and they're in 10th place. 
Um, Chelsea in 11th on 31 points. That is absolutely shocking. I think, you know, Chelsea's only saving grace is the relegation zone is 12 points away. Um, they're not going to get dragged into that, given the fact it's been so awful at the bottom this season. Um, but that's abysmal for them. Um, Sheffield United bottom on 10 points. Like I said, they're done. They're finished. They're getting relegated. Um, they're 10 points away from safety. Um, it's Luton that occupy that position at the moment on 20 points. Um, and then it's Nottingham Forest on 21 and Brentford on 22. They're still in a bit of trouble there. Um, so, yeah, they're going to have to try and get back to winning ways. And Crystal Palace on 24 points. Like I said, they could very easily get dragged into it. But we'll wait and see what happens. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comments section what you think about the games over the weekend. Um, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.